So we are heading to Nigeria now. And I'm so excited. We've got Desmond joining us. Uh, Desmond um, Ajeko Dunmi is joining us. He is an electroacoustic engineer and documentary producer, an on-air personality and an avowed creation care activist who established an agroforestry farm uh, in Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria, 35 years ago. This is now the Lekki Urban Forest Animal Sanctuary Initiative, or the FOSI for short. I'm going to bring him in live with us right now. Hey, Desmond, how are you? Hello, hello. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> good. I love, I love your background, the forest, the, <laughs> the ecosystem. It's beautiful. Yeah. How about the foreground? Can you see the um, presentation foreground? I do see it. I'm going to bring it in front and center here now. This okay. is maybe not as beautiful, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, jo Joni Mitchell got it way back. You know, she was one of the first people who came up with an environmental song. Um, you know, uh, we take paradise, put up a parking lot. We take Absolutely. paradise and put up a parking lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Desmond, before I let you take over, can I suggest if you click the little hide button there at the bottom, that'll take away that little tab and it'll give us a nice, a cleaner view. If you click the, you can see it's next to stop sharing and it says hide. Gotcha. Yeah, right there. Beautiful. All right, Alrighty. my friend, I'm going to let you take over and share your story. Then we'll ask you a few questions. All righty, all righty. Well, welcome to Lagos, where we followed Joni Mitchell's injunction. Joni Mitchell, for those who might be a little bit too young to know, was one of the first people who came out with an environmental song, American folk singer. And the main lyric was, ooh, la, 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 we take paradise, put up a parking lot. Anyway, welcome to Lagos, e cabo, e cabo, as we say in Yoruba which is the predominant language in this, one of the fastest growing, most congested cities in the whole world, Lagos, Nigeria, where I was born and bred 73 years ago, at a time when Lagos was actually a very, very green city. Uh, but this is Lagos now. Oh, loads of challenges because she is surrounded almost by water. We have the ocean Atlantic on our border, and then we have lagoons and tributaries of upstream rivers feeding in to Lagos. So she's very prone to abhorrent weather conditions, particularly those that have to do with the water. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah. Right, here we are with me at the beach, Lagos Beach, massively, terribly eroded. You can see the sand in the background. It's just been wiped away. In fact, all these coconut trees, they've gone. This picture was taken about um, just slightly over 12 years ago. They've all gone. Hundreds of thousands of coconut trees down our coast have just been totally wiped out by the rising seas. Uh-huh. That's one of the symptoms of climate change, is it not? And more ferocious ocean waves, because as I'm sure we're all very aware, I learned this in my mother's kitchen. And I was a little kid, when you add heat to water, it makes the water more ferocious, starts to boil it starts to evaporate the water. And now we know at least uh, 90, I think it's about 95% of global scientists agree that we are adding more heat to the atmosphere of our earth. And this is just one of the symptoms of that heat. And I think this is when I decided, okay, I'm no longer going to be an environmentalist. In fact, I told uh, King Charles that when he came here as a prince, that um, his father was the one that was responsible for making me become an environmentalist many, many years ago when he was the president of the Worldwide Fund for Nature. He came to Nigeria to open up um, the groundbreaking of an institution that I belong to, Nigerian Conservation Foundation. And, uh, you know, he said something that was 
quite impactful to my consciousness that um, we do not hold, you, you know their accents, you know, uh, British royalty. So it was sort of, we, we do not hold the world for ourselves. It does not belong to us. We are holding it in trust for our children to whom we must hand it over sooner or later. And that was very impactful. Yeah, of course we don't. Yeah, we're going to give it to our kids and we love our kids. We love, we love our kids. So let's make sure that we give it back to them in a good condition and maybe even in a better condition than what we inherited it from our parents and our great grandparents who were living by very good uh, indigenous standards as a wonderful, wonderful speaker has just uh, told us about. Bless you, bless you young lady. You'll go far. Yeah, and bless you guys for promoting this cause so effectively. So this beach where we used to do live concerts, you know, myself and my wife, because she she was a later American great singer. You know, we, we, we did nature concerts here. We had a we had a record that we released called Green Leaves. When you wake up in the morning and you breathe, give thanks to Mother Nature for those trees and all those green, green leaves, so you and I can breathe. If we tear down all the forest and all the trees, where would that leave us? Where would we be without those green, green leaves? So you and I can breathe. That was the title track of, of the album. Another one was uh, Mother Nature. My mother nature saying, oh, Lord, there's no delaying. We're looking for a solution to all our pollution, yeah. Oh, by the way, I, I can't sing. Sheila, my late wife, um, she didn't allow me to sing because I can't really sing. She had an incredible voice. In fact, Stevie Wonder, when he heard her, he just, he, he, anyway, that's another story. But she, she she allowed me to do the rapping, you know? So I was like, what well, was the greed motivation moving on the fast lane? Industrialists, they play a dangerous game. Falling all around a lot of acid rain. This whole situation is getting insane. Now all the little children going to grow up. Yeah, going to check out what they got. <laughs> Old school. Old school rap, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we used to perform on this beach. This is Lecky Beach, beautiful beach with tens of thousands of people. And now the beach is gone. So this is one of the things that sort of drove me towards, uh, you know, not just being an environmentalist, but being an environmental activist, which is um, what I told uh, Prince Charles, as I said, when he came, because it was also something that he said at one of the G20 conferences that were held in, in, in London, where, where I, I, I was in the town. And, you know, he called the G20 leaders. He's one of the few people in the world and just pick up the phone and say, well, chaps, um, you're all here now, um, Obama and all the rest of you. Would you like to just pop around to my house for dinner? They were all there. And then he gave, he gave this very short speech. And it went like this. He said, if we lose the battle against the protection of the tropical rainforest, we shall have lost the battle against climate change. And we shall be bequeathing unto our children a poisoned chalice. And that day I just said, no, this is it. This is it. The ocean is rising. It's tearing down that beautiful, beautiful lucky beach where we used to give our concerts. And now the reality of what we have done to this planet is staring us in the face. A poison chalice, that's my legacy to you, children, that I claim to love, a cup full of poison, a wrecked ecosystem. I said, no, 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 we are going to fight this all the way. We're going to fight this all the way. And we started our rallies. This particular one was Save the Lecky Coast. We marched and we beat our drums and, you know, peaceful. It was always peaceful, and that's the one that works. It's harder. It's a lot harder. Sometimes you have to pay a hard price, a very high price, for doing it peacefully. So, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we marched. We marched, and we advocated for protecting the coast and stopping all this nonsense. And at first, there were a lot of deniers, people that say, oh, what are you talking about? And we said, well, it's not our knowledge. If you want to know where the knowledge comes from, check this out, Okay. Secretary General of the United Nations, humanity is waging war on nature. It's suicidal. It's suicidal. Humanity is committing suicidal act upon herself. 
Nature always strikes back and is already doing so with growing force and fury. Whoa, whoa, that's powerful. And we're going to come back to that. The point of no return is no longer over the horizon. It is in sight and hurtling towards us. And this is the key element of the statements that have been coming out of the UN. It's all very well if, okay, things are getting bad with nature. We've really got to do something about it. We've got to really cut back on all this uh, gases we're releasing and all the pollution and all the destruction of the bio diversity we really need to do something otherwise yeah it's going to get uncomfortable no no there is a point of no return there's a point where you cannot bring it back no matter what your puny technology and you know i have a lot of reverence for the tremendous technology that we human beings have been able to create this technology that's allowing me to converse with you from my place in lagos to you guys in different parts of the world wonderful wonderful technology yes yes and the kind of technology that can take us into space and in that way we see the vastness and the greatness and the tremendousness of space and in that way we can see how small and fragile our little planet is the ratio of the planet's atmosphere is paper thin in comparison to the size of the planet and this is the atmosphere that makes this as far as all our research has gone the only livable planet that we've been able to discover and we're ripping it, we're ripping it, we're going to a point of no return. And this is why we must inspire more activists because this is the most defining issue that humanity has ever faced. Because if we continue this way for the next eight to 12 years, and I'm sure many of you are so aware, ain't gonna be able to bring it back with our puny technology. And why do I call it puny technology? Hey, Hurricane Katrina was heading towards New Orleans. They knew when it would come. They knew where it would hit. And with all the great space moonwalking technology, we were not able to slow it down for one second or divert it for one centimeter. Nature is a powerful, powerful, powerful force. And my dear people, we must ensure that we do not go beyond that point. And that's why here in Lagos, in Nigeria, we have been advocating and marching and inspiring. And there's a lot of young people now coming to the fore. It's really, really encouraging. And this was what inspired us to convert what used to be a farm way back, agroforestry farm in Lagos that I started about 34 years ago on the outskirts. So what was at that time, the outskirts of Lagos, and we converted it into a park when we saw that the city was expanding. And in the process of doing that, we've been able to bring loads of people there, especially young people, and inspire them with the beauty of nature, get them into the groove as soon as they come in, all the tension eases off because there's a lot of fresh air, of course, oxygen. And the phytocins coming off the trees. We do Shinrin Yoko, which is the forest bathing practice of the, Chi of the Japanese that invigors you and inspires you and helps you to overcome a lot of health issues and so on. They feel so at home there. And you see, our motto at Lufasi Park is loving nature. And it's a double on John. It, 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 it's, it, it means, you know, you need to have a loving nature for you to be loving nature. And if you're loving nature, nature is going to love you back. Aha. Uh -huh. And we're going to really, really try to home in on this because, you know, the reality of the problem, and I'll just show you before we get too deep into that. That's that's Lufasi. You can see just you know surrounded, <laughs> surrounded by what is now very, 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 very dense uh, urban development. It's a breath of fresh air in this area, but it's such a powerful advocacy tool. You know, we've been able to convert it. There you can see some of the palm trees giving palm oil uh, to agroforestry. So there's a lot of natural forest, as you saw in the previous picture 
And yeah, so people just come. In fact, the big challenge we have is because um, we have a closing time. We don't like people to stay late into the evening. <laughs> people, <laughs> people come, they don't want to go home, man. In fact, some of them now, the big thing is to come with, with, with a camper. So we have one, one section now where we do a lot of camping. And uh, a group of youngsters came just yesterday for the, the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which is something that he inspired. He was a great uh, environmentalist and he passed it on to his son, who is now King Charles, who definitely were very, very influenced by. In fact, the Duke of Edinburgh actually wrote a letter from Buckingham Palace for me and my wife, Sheila, with our record, Green Leaves, to go to London and release it on Island Records. And we got there, you know, and the guy, artist guy, that's a really, yeah, yeah, he thought, wow, this is actually fantastic, fantastic stuff. But you can't sing every song about environment, beautiful voice and everything. So let's do maybe two environment songs and then we can have some more commercial music in there. So guess what? We walked out, man. Yeah, we walked out of <laughs> because we said, no, <clears throat> we are going to be advocating this because we have a desire to be loving nature. And in Lufasi Park, we have been preserving nature as well. This is a wonderful guy, Mark, Dr. Mark, beautiful, beautiful, great uh, environmentalist himself. He set up a pangolin rehabilitation center where we fenced off a little portion. This is a group of people from the American consulate who came there and just, you know, wanted to check it all out. And they really, really loved it. And also, we are so, so excited because hmm, these hooded vultures that are now on the critically endangered list, there you see a couple of them just flying around in Lufasi. And one of them is actually perched on one of our fences within the park you can see the wall there and for vultures to become habituated to human beings it is almost miraculous because they know who their enemies are we are wiping them out and we use our vultures in lufasi as an advocacy tool and we tell people we have a few posters and banners up there and so on and we tell people well if you want more pandemics then just um you know wipe out the vultures because guess what Vulture is nature's way of ensuring that pandemics and diseases will not be spread into the system. They are nature's cleanup squad, and we're just wiping them out. Critically endangered hooded vultures. You hardly see them anywhere in Lagos, anywhere in that part of Nigeria now. But they're there at Lufasi, and they are very, very happy to be at Lufasi. Ah. So again, it brings us to the point, you know, what are we doing? What are we doing? Here's a group of people that came to the park. Again, they didn't want to go. And the question we put to these lovely people was what on earth are we doing? And why are we doing it when we have received all the necessary warnings? We have been told very, very clearly by the United Nations. I mean, come on, the UN, you want to, You think they put a bunch of jerks in the UN? Do you know what it takes to become Secretary General of that particular organization? And the tremendous, wonderful work that the United Nations is doing, has been doing in the past. They have access to all the science, all the science. What? What? Is it pictures from space? You, the Secretary General of the UN can pick up his phone and say, okay, what was the average rainfall in Seattle in 1995? Boom, within seconds, it's there, come on. And they're blowing the alarm. In fact, just more recently, he said, we're hurtling, we're hurtling towards climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. What? So the reality is that we are just getting back from nature what we're giving to her. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been planting mangoes and I've been planting cashews for about 25 years. I've never seen a cashew come out of my mango tree. I've never seen a mango come out of the cashew tree. 
with my limited intelligence, it does indicate to me that nature operates from inviolable laws. And one of those fundamental laws is the law of action begetting reaction. The cosmos, everything about it is operating on those principles. The reason why we're revolving around the sun and the moon around us is these same principles. What you sow is what you reap. And it's clear and obvious that what we have been sowing for hundreds and hundreds of years against each other at first, oh yeah, we gotta be aggressive, we gotta fight the war, we gotta boom, bang, boom, da, 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 da. And in those days, we didn't really have the technology, but because of the incredible capacity of the human brain, and we were able to start developing the technology and our technological systems evolved, evolved, industrial revolution came about, and we now fast-tracked our technology, started getting better and better, bringing more comfort, bringing more safety, bringing in some ways at some time better health, bringing a lot of benefits, but did we evolve enough to be responsible enough to handle this technology? I don't think so. Because we allowed other factors to override our decisions. And we got so caught up into the profit motivation. Remember that rap? Now that the greed motivation's moving on the fast lane, industrialists, they play a dangerous game, and this game has become more and more dangerous, and it is affecting nature. And now, this is where, this is where the change has to come, because <laughs> what you sow <laughs> into nature, she's obliged to give it back. Our indigenous people over time immemorial, quite often they were just sowing harmonious activity within nature, giving back some of what they took out, which by the way, everything that we take out of nature are things that we need for our survival. It's our, it's our life support system and it's these children's life support system. So as Greta Thunberg said at the United Nations, how dare you? And she was pointing her finger at the people who had done this to her life support system. How dare you do this to your children? <sighs> so my dear people, again, let's remind ourselves, point of no return, humanity waging war, and ask ourselves this question, how is it possible that the most intellectual creature to ever walk the planet Earth is destroying its only home because she is obliging nature to give back the negativity how is it possible? How is it possible that we are doing this, not just to ourselves, but to our children whom we claim to love? My dear people, we gotta change our ways. We gotta change our ways. And as the children who came to Lufasi Park just yesterday, I'm so glad they came. I will sing this with them. We are at Lufasi Park, loving nature. We are at Lufasi Park, loving nature. <laughs> and my dear folks, that's what we got to be doing. We just got to be loving nature by having a loving nature. And on that note, I will sign out here and just say one love to all of you. And that's what's supposed to be playing in the background. If you can hear it, great. If not, the key and the message is just let's be loving nature because nature is sending that signal to us that we can't continue this way anymore. And we have to change. We don't have much time to make that change. But I believe that all of you listening here and all of you wonderful guys involved in this incredible thing that you're doing right now, I believe that you're spearheading 
what is going to be an incredible change. And we shall make the world a better place. My dear people, thank you very, very much. I've taken up a lot of your time. Thank you. <laughs> Desmond, thank you so much. That is such a powerful presentation. Uh, Ufasi seems like a beautiful place, that kind of oasis in the middle of of a, a chaotic city. And it's so important that you can bring that space to people and you can bring mo most importantly, those students there um, because education is such a key component to what is going to help us protect our biodiversity. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got to do that. But you know, the, the, the most key of the components is to change our attitudes and, you know, have, as, uh, as the guy said, a loving nature, because all this, you know, war and aggression and negativity that we've been um, promoting against ourselves, it's, um, it's gone on a little bit too long and it has to change. Otherwise, you know, nature is going to deal with us. She already is. Yeah. And we're seeing, we're seeing the science. So I, I got to thank you guys, you know, for doing what you're doing. I'm so, my heart is so touched because when we started this, you know, 40 years ago, we would like people who just, you know, kind of weirdos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you are really at the front lines of of climate change. You're seeing what's happening uh, in the city, in the country. So, you know, it's 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 not it's not something far off for you. Uh, it's something that you're seeing, especially with that beach that you showed us, that that beautiful site where you could gather and 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 celebrate and 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 you, you see what's already been lost. Absolutely, absolutely. But you guys are seeing the, the little edges of it. And unfortunately, um, with the El Nino, that's the you know, warmer, warmer natural pattern that's coming, you know, next year, next couple of years, we're going to see a whole lot of stuff. And we can all see it now because of this, you know, this technology. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge wake up call. Yeah, and the, the good news, though, it's not too late. We can do this. We can do this, you know, and you guys are doing it. I'm so proud of you all. Keep up the wonderful good work. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, keep bringing those students there. Uh, I'm so thrilled. Mark has joined us multiple times at the Global Biodiversity Festival and shared the amazing work he's doing protecting uh, pangolins in Nigeria. And I'm thrilled that there's a space there that they can, you know, start that first step to being released back into the wild. Absolutely. And the vultures as well. And the children, because a lot of the city children, they, they, they don't have um, much of a relationship, as you can imagine, with nature. So when they come there, it's like, ah, ah, what is this? And we say, yeah, yeah, this is actually part of your life support system. Protect it. So they, we're, we're developing activists now. They're coming out there and they're saying, no, we're not going to kill the pangolin. We're not going to kill the, the, the vultures. We're going to look after nature. We're going to plant trees. So there's tremendous hope. Tremendous hope. We, you know, it's, it's it's just a matter of you know bringing out the goodness in us and stop bringing out the badness because the badness hit us back. Absolutely, Desmond. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the powerful work that you're doing in your community, and hopefully we see a little more of that paved over parking lot coming back to green space and <laughs> and you know nature is resilient. It can it can make a comeback if it's given space. Exactly. Exactly. But. We have to do it in time, in time. And we have enough time to do it, but we've got to stop dawdling. We've got to do it now. All right, Desmond, thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. I hope you can tune in a little longer. And we're going to sign off from Nigeria for today. Thank you so much for being with us.